I studied the motivational effects of gamification, and I used the piano lesson environment. Students often cite having to practice scales as one of the reasons they quit piano lessons. And students often say that the, these exercises are difficult, they're boring, they're repetitive, they're useless. So my research question was, does gamification affect students' motivation to practice technical exercises? I'd heard of this gamification, and I thought, is this something I could use to help motivate my students so they would practice scales more? So what is gamification? It is the process whereby game design and game mechanics are applied in non-game contexts to influence behavior. So what we do is we look at a game and we say, how is this game designed? And what are the elements of this game that make it really engaging and that keep people playing it for hours on end? And then can we take some of those same elements and put them over in a context that's not a game, like a learning context, like an educational context or a business context, and say, can we transfer some of that engagement over? So gamification is really big in industry right now. It's a buzzword. Everyone is talking about it in marketing because industry has seen how it is effective. It's effective for influencing purchasing behavior and brand loyalty. And here's a couple of examples. This first one is uh, a project initiated by Volkswagen. Has anyone seen this before? It's the fun theory? Yeah. So um, what they wanted to do was say, can we use gamification to influence how many people take the stairs in the subway station as opposed to just getting on the escalator and riding up? So it turns out that 66% more people took the stairs in this case when it was fun to do and when this gamification aspect was added. And air miles, probably you're familiar with that. So you can kind of see from these examples that gamification is not where you tell somebody, okay, do this task, and then when they complete it, you give them a reward. It's, it's actually a much more complex um, phenomenon than that. It takes into consideration technology, design, strategy, psychology, what's in a person's mind, what makes them decide to do something. Let's think about some of the elements of games that make games engaging. So we'll go to one of the most popular games of all time. I am not a player of this game, but in over 10 million subscribers online are. I don't know if anyone, is anyone in the room? WoW player? No. I've heard often WoW players don't admit that they are though, so there could be someone here and they're just not admitting it. These are elements that are in many, many games. World of Warcraft has story. It has characters. It has opportunities for its players to get recognition. Uh, this game's not the same for everyone who plays it, and it's not the same every time you play it. This game is designed very well. You can see by the logo here how like the colors just look really nice together and it's really intricate. And all the graphics in World of Warcraft are, they have a lot of depth and their colors are really rich. Uh, this game offers the players control over how they want to play the game. So two players could be having a totally different experience based on what strategies they want to use and what things they want to collect. If you go into a battle in World of Warcraft and you die, you don't have to turn it off and go away. You can try again. You can keep replaying that same battle over and over again until you win. And the game gives continual feedback. So every time you try something in the game and it doesn't work, that's giving you some information about what doesn't work. Then you can try again, then you get more feedback, and this continual feedback loop helps you get better and better at the game and keeps you playing it. But I was able to take some of the elements from that game and from other popular games and put them into the game I created. The game is called Technique Tower. And here are some of the elements that I put into it. Uh, to bring in characters, I allowed each player to create their own <laughs> um, avatar and name it. The way we brought in story, the story is character starts at the bottom of the tower and character climbs up to the top and then that's the end, that's the climax of the story when they get to the top. So as a player in the game masters a technical element, that would give them a certain number of points and then a certain number of points uh, helps you beat a level, you get a trophy and you move up the tower. And participants can also earn these bonus stars as well in the game. So this is an opportunity for players to be recognized for their achievements. This is all online. Players also recognize for their accomplishments. So this is online as well. This is the audio record of all the 
technical exercises that this participant mastered. So when you master a scale, it gets recorded and uploaded directly to your website, and anyone can go there, your friends or your family or anyone who happens to visit the page, and listen to you play the D-flat formula pattern, which is a great accomplishment if you can master that. And we also brought into the game as online social context and that anyone could comment. So anyone can, can see what you're doing. So now instead of just mastering that scale in your private piano lesson, the teacher says, way to go. Now it's online for the whole world to see and to comment on your progress. I have to mention the turkey. I brought turkey in because, you know, when you have them for piano lessons, it's like one lesson per week and then it's a whole week of, you know, you're not seeing them. I wondered, would they remember there was a game happening? So I invented this character, Technique Turkey. Yes, you know who I am. I'm Technique Turkey. Yeah, this I'm is the Turkey. I'm Technique Turkey. I'm Technique Turkey. Reminding you to practice technique. So this turkey sent out a message every week to all the players in the game. And the players all said, that turkey did not motivate me to practice at all. It did not remind me to practice. Like, everybody was talking about the turkey, and they were, like, mystified, like, Who's the voice of that turkey? You know, they didn't realize it was my voice. It, it did add an element of fun. So in terms of what I found, I wanted to see, does gamification cause participants to master more technical exercises? Do they achieve more? But I also wanted to ask, does the game increase their self-efficacy, their belief and their own ability to play scales, and also their attitude? Like, would the game players love scales more than than the non-game players. So half of our students played the game and half didn't, so we could compare the results. So in terms of achievement, we found a statistical significant increase in the game players in terms of the amount of technical exercises they mastered, which was really exciting. And it was highly statistical significant. In fact, it was almost double the achievement with the with gamification group. In terms of self-advocacy, I did not notice any difference in players at the beginning of the study and at the end or between groups. Control and experimental group had stable self-efficacy scores throughout. The study was a short length of time. It was only a nine-week study. So perhaps changes in this kind of thing would take longer to manifest. In terms of attitude, I did see an increased positive attitude with the gamification group. And while I was really happy to see the achievement increase, where I was really hoping to see gamification have an effect was in self-efficacy and attitude. Because I wondered if achievement can be affected by the game. But when the game is done, maybe achievement levels go back to normal. But if a game could influence your attitude toward practicing scales, then maybe that's something that would be lasting. In terms of what I want to further do with this research, it is to look at the long-term effects of gamification to also try to incorporate more gaming elements to see if that can have an even greater effect, particularly on the intrinsic motivation that would manifest in self-efficacy and attitude. And in terms of application, uh, this research can be applied in other contexts, obviously like for other private piano lessons, like in other instruments, but also maybe in contexts where you have students in class for a short time, but then they need to spend like extended time practicing between between class in order to master it. So I'm thinking of like a home reading program. Thank you very much for listening to my presentation.